Greetings fanboys and fangirls, Jared here with another review from Fanboys Forever, and today I'm going to be bringing you a review of the brand new Masters of the Universe Revelation Skelegod action figure. Now, this is the very first Masters of the Universe Revelation toy or product of any sort that we've had the chance to review on the channel. And of course, Revelation is the brand new anime series that will be premiering on Netflix very soon from creator Kevin Smith. So I can't wait to get into what this brand new seven inch scale product line will bring us. First of all, before we get started, I'll go ahead and let you know that here at Fanboys Forever, we do all sorts of brand new Masters of the Universe content all the time, including news and reviews and discussion videos. So be sure to subscribe before we get started and like the video if you can, it really helps us out. Without further ado, let's get started. First things first, we'll be looking at the packaging. When this was first revealed, I was a little concerned about the packaging design, and a lot of those concerns still stay, particularly with how bland some of the box really is. It looks better with Skeletor here than it does for some of the basic figures, but some of it just doesn't scream Masters of the Universe to me, particularly that we have this kind of strange top portion, and bizarrely, this barcode here. However, I do like the kind of uh, cracks, like it's cracked stone, and I like all the glyphs. You can see the He-Man logo back there. And there's all sorts of other little just hidden images and Easter eggs for Masters of the Universe fans to discover. So I think there's some cool stuff going on here. Uh, I don't know though, I would have much rather had more the red look or even the gray skull kind of look uh, from classics, but I do appreciate that they're trying to go their own way with this packaging so that it's distinct on the shelf. You can see very much that it is a Netflix product, of course. And then we have the Revelation logo and the name Skelegod. On the side, we just have the Skelegod name. And on the other side, we get some really cool artwork of Skelegod. But here it is. He definitely seems to be more of a cosmic entity because of all of the planets in the background. And on the back, we get that same artwork in a much larger sense. And we have this cool little bio here. And if this helps anyone, here is the barcode at the bottom. Got this figure at Target.com. We were able to do store pickup to get ours. So let's go ahead and begin. All right, and here we have Skelegod out of the packaging. And we'll just go ahead and start by covering some of the basics of this figure. Apparently, the Masters of the Universe Revelations line is a 7-inch scaled line. And Skelegod himself is a deluxe figure. He is $30, so he's a little bit larger. And he is very nearly 8 inches tall. This means he's about an inch taller in scale and he's very imposing. So let's go ahead and have a look at the actual sculpting itself. You can see that this Skeletor is definitely powered up compared to the Skeletor that we are all familiar with. Um, I'm really loving the body sculpting, the kind of muscles. The head sculpt itself is really cool and incredibly gnarly looking. Uh, he has definitely the ram's horns going on. He's almost wearing a helmet of some sort and there's energy all around the base of his neck. You can see that he has his own kind of perverse version of He-Man's H-Shield that's going to be featured prominently in this show. Uh, you can also see the kind of muscles going on right there, which look pretty similar to the sculpt of He-Man's muscles on that figure, but of course this one's bigger. You can also see that he has kind of a loincloth, and it almost looks like an evil wolf or something. There's uh, sculpting down here on the boots, and I love this because to me this looks like Castle Grayskull. And if this accessory is anything to go by then it doesn't take much of a detective to piece together what this means. Apparently, Skeletor has finally gotten the power. So it is a very exciting look, and kind of terrifying when you think about it, of what it would be like if Skeletor was tapping into the power of Grayskull. On the back is where things get maybe even more interesting, because you have this really cool soft goods cape setup. Uh, you can see that we even have these sculpted weighted pieces that keep these pieces down, and there's all sorts of layers. Uh, believe it or not, this looks like two layers, but it's not, it's actually just printing. But then we have these, and then this. So it gives a very dynamic look. Especially cool is that the shoulder pads continue with those kind of crazy looking green eyes to the side. You can see that it kind of looks like a monster of some sort. And then we have, of course, the clawed toes, which are keeping in line with Skeletor's normal design. And then under the cape, you can see that, yes, Skeletor still is wearing the furry loincloth, so good for him. Paint-wise, there's definitely lots of interesting things going on here. Uh, particularly, there is kind of a, a wash or a dry brushing or whatever you want to call it all throughout the body, and you can see it there with that kind of dark brushing going through. 
I think it looks pretty good. There's a few spots like right here where it seems to be kind of haphazardly applied and are a little distracting, but it's really not that bad. This is a brand new design of Skeletor. And the truth is we don't really know exactly how it's going to look in animation. There might've been some teases towards it. Of course, by the time you're watching this months and months later, you'll know exactly how this is supposed to look. We can only assume this is accurate. Uh, maybe it would have looked a little better if the head was setting maybe slightly lower, but I think it's supposed to be levitating over this energy. Uh, he is a little pinheaded, but that appears to be less a criticism of the figure and more criticism of the designs in the show. So it's a little small looking. I think it might look better with a bigger head. But other than that, I think that it looks fairly cool. And these gauntlets are really nice too. We have this accessory over here, which is kind of this big ball of energy that just goes directly over the hand. I like this as if he was punching He-Man with kind of a, uh, almost like a Dragon Ball looking energy attack. He does come with alternative hands. You can see that he has one open right here and then one clench to hold the power sword. He does get the alternate hands for each side. So you can have two clenched hands or two open hands. However, I am a little puzzled why he did not include a fist. So I think that might have been even more useful. Let's go ahead and look at articulation with Skeletor. So this is a brand new line of figures. So it is important that we cover the articulation fairly thoroughly. The head is on a ball joint and it has lots and lots of flexibility. So you can look pretty far up, fairly far down, and then lots of side to side movement. And of course, all the way around. Going on down to the diaphragm, you get pretty good crunch actually, pretty far back, pretty far forward, and a little bit of side to side even. We do get a waist swivel. We also get plenty of action at the arms with a bicep swivel. We are able to go up and down, but he's limited a little bit by the harness, but because of this flexible material, you can go way up and it doesn't bother things too much. There's even some gappage right there to where you can take the arm and work with that a little bit. So it doesn't hurt things too badly. And of course this can go in and out. Then we have a double jointed elbow, which that's nice. We also get a swivel at the wrist. You can also see that he does have hinges at the wrist, which is pretty great when you wanna have evil monologue posing. Oh, he man. And when you change the hands out, believe it or not, the gauntlets are also removable. So if you wish, you can get this look. I'm not sure why you'd want that because it looks a little weird, but it is possible. Below the waist, we do have lots of good articulation. We do have a swivel there, and we are able to take the leg way up, and the loincloth really doesn't bother it too much. Because it's so flexible, it can go as high up as you can possibly get. We get a double jointed knee, which works very well. We even get a boot swivel, and we get a ball joint and ankle rocker system. Now, this is the one area where I will criticize the articulation. It's not because of the function, but it's more because of the give. So as you can see, he leans over very easily. The whole problem is because this isn't very strong at all. Now this one over here is actually fairly sturdy, but this one is not. This reminds me so much of the Masters Universe Classics days where it seems like half of them I would get would have this issue and so many of them I had to take some super glue and reinforce in that area and just to give them a little more friction. So as you can see, he is very wobbly when it comes to that. I feel like I have to balance him just right to where that doesn't happen. And as you can see, they're not exactly flat to the ground. It's kind of scooted over to the side and kind of maneuvered around. So that's a little irritating. It's an easy fix, of course. And that's probably something I definitely will do. It's not a deal breaker, but it's something to be aware of. Since this is a brand new design for Skeletor, it's definitely worth getting a good look at the head sculpt. I really love the gnarliness of the teeth and the wash that's been put in them. You of course have the two kind of simplistic dots for Skeletor's eyes, but I think it works really well. And I definitely think this is a big improvement over the basic Skeletor head sculpt that we've seen. I know that there are definitely questions about scale, so let's go ahead and bring a couple of figures in. Let's start by having him scale alongside a Masters Universe Origins figure, which are on the shelves concurrently with these guys. Since this guy is bigger than the standard Revelations figures, and these guys are about five and a half inches tall, you can definitely see a huge difference in height here. 
So even though these guys do have a huge difference, it's probably appropriate. My guess is in the show, this guy is probably much larger than even this figure is making it out to be. So I would say that it would scale very well if you're trying to put them with Origins to have this be kind of like a big bad. So how does he scale with Masters of the Universe Classics? If you're like me, you're still a huge fan of classics after all these years. And as you can see, they're quite a bit larger than Masters of the Universe Classics. Masters of the Universe Classics is almost a 7-inch scaled line, and apparently Revelation will be 7-inch scaled. So these guys are definitely a little smaller, but I think the scale works pretty well, if not for the head size. And as you can see, the head sizes are uh, vastly different. Speaking of heads, it is important for us to answer questions about modularity between all of the different Masters lines. So let's go ahead and let's put it to the test. Now, from what I understand, Masters Universe Revelations heads aren't necessarily meant to be popped off and changed out, but it seems awfully easy to me to do that very thing. And to me, this looks exactly like Masters Universe Classics uh, ball pegs that were on the heads. For that reason, I do expect it to be rather simple to trade them out. So let's go ahead and have a look at the Masters Universe Classics Filmation Skeletor head. And just as I imagined, it works no problem at all. However, Skeletor's hood makes it really hard to fit over this energy aura, so he's looking down perpetually. However, it's still a pretty cool look. Let's go this time with a Masters Universe Classic Skeletor figure that I think is very much underrated. It is the New Adventures Skeletor figure. This is probably my favorite Skeletor head sculpt that the Four Horsemen have ever done. For whatever reason, this one felt like it was having a much harder time going in, so I didn't want to force it. Uh, however, I'm sure if you heated it up a little bit, it would probably be fine. But as you can see, it didn't quite go on there. But it looks kind of neat. I like that. You can put the helmet on if you want a slightly different look. And I like it. That leads to an interesting question about if the Masters Universe Origins heads can fit. Let's try the one that's packed in with Keldor, the Target Exclusive Pack. And that had a much easier time going on than the Classics heads. And I actually really like this. This is the Alfredo Alcala head. And it looks great. And just because I know it's everyone's favorite Skeletor head, here's Scared Skeletor from that original first release in Origins. And if you want to have him revert to Keldor, you can do that. But because of the hair, he is perpetually looking down. However, adjust the diaphragm, and it's not so bad. So if the head is switchable that way, is it switchable this way onto a Classics body? Yes, it is. Doesn't look too bad, although he ends up looking more like one of these Skeleton Warriors. And if it's switchable onto a Classics body, is it switchable onto an Origins body? Yes, it is. Uh, it actually looks to be in uh, an okay scale for that. So it really is the kind of uh, head that can sort of cheat either way. It definitely looks more appropriate on a smaller body than it would on the larger Classics body. But I really do like the look of this. So believe it or not, with Skelegod, and presumably with the rest of the Revelation line, you do have the opportunity for plenty of modularity. However, I do wonder about what's removable from the figure itself. Let's go ahead and take the head off. We already know the gauntlets are removable. So let's see about this cape. All we have to do is pull this off. We have these two metal tabs right here. And apparently there are just connections up here that it simply sets on with like a clip system. I think that these are magnetized slightly maybe, but these clips are kind of what holds it onto the harness. Once we take that off, we can see that you can definitely do it without the cape. We'll just pop the head back on. And he looks good this way, although he kind of needs the cape to make the head not so pinheaded. For some reason, he looks much more out of whack this way without the cape, but it still looks okay. And you can see it just comes forward. This whole top part actually just comes right off. And the green part appears to just pop out. Now, this means you can just be left with this, and the green part can be left as more of an effect piece. That leaves this harness, and you can see that it's actually pegged into the front here. So there really isn't much removing this because of that peg system, and it's even attached back here. So really, this harness is probably going to stay unless you're willing to do some customizing. And it's a simple matter to just thread it right back through. And now that we have him down to this, let's go ahead and put the head on. And you can see without the collar, he is rather long-necked and has a very green neck. So this looks a little weird like this. 
we do have the ability to add the energy effect right back, and this kind of helps uh, alleviate that issue. And we can, of course, just put the whole collar assembly right back on. And if you look, there's two holes down here where these tabs slide in. And they're not glued or anything, they just set in there. And we can try the head without the glowing effect piece. And that actually looks fairly decent. I suppose if Skeletor isn't powered up, you can just do this. And it is funny just to see a bright lime green neck. So I personally plan on pretty much always using the effects piece. And here is Skelegod all reassembled. And I have to say that I'm very, very pleased with this particular figure. I think that it's an excellent first taste of the Masters of the Universe Revelation line. Of course, it's icing on the cake that he is now available on Target.com, where he was at the recording of this video. And I think that he makes a perfect introduction to the line. He's large, imposing, and very, very cool looking. And I hope that he's a great indicator of things to come within the line. If you've enjoyed this review, or if it's been helpful to you at all, please go ahead and give us the like if you feel we deserve it. If not, that's okay too. Of course, I also ask that if you enjoyed this video at all, that you subscribe so that you can see all the brand new Masters of the Universe content that we have coming up, including a brand new updated top 30 Masters of the Universe Origins figures that will be coming very soon. So I hope that you will enjoy that. Also, of course, keep an eye on the channel because we will be offering our take on each episode of Masters of the Universe Revelation. And I cannot wait to share that with you. Guys, as always, God bless each and every one of you. Be safe out there. I'll see you on Fanboys Forever. Fanboy out. Thank you.